Undoubtedly, the vast majority of researchers aims to conduct research in the most adequate way possible. Yet, for understanding how and why individual researchers behave in ways that conform to or violate norms and standards of research integrity, it is essential to explain ethical and unethical behavior in the context of research. Therefore, it is important to define what ethics is. Ethics is indeed the branch of philosophy that is concerned with what is right and wrong. It examines how people should live a good life with others in just institutions. As such, ethics may also advise us on how to organize our communal practices and support us in our attempts to create just institutions and systems. A branch of ethics that answers the question, what should I do? is normative ethics, which focuses on providing a framework for ethical behavior in practice. Three frameworks in normative ethics are consequentialism, deontology and virtue ethics. For consequentialists, the moral quality of an action is determined by the real and expected consequences of an action at individual or society level. Deontological ethics focuses on principles, norms or codes. Actions are considered good if they comply with relevant rules. Virtue ethics is concerned with personal character and getting used to act in a good way. What is good depends on the judgment of a virtuous person and the virtuous person has developed a disposition to act in accordance with the right mean. According to consequentialist ethics, as researchers we may ask what are the consequences of reporting all relevant results, both for society and for ourselves as researchers? Along this question, we may subdivide consequentialist theories into hedonism and utilitarianism. Ethical hedonism, or egoism, is the normative claim that one ought to act on self-interested motives. Hedonism holds that a researcher's self-interest should serve as the ultimate criterion. From this it follows that as researchers we should act in a way that maximizes our own interest. If journals, research funding institutions and the research system at large reward the publication of spectacular findings, this may unintentionally promote ethical hedonism among researchers, leading to not publishing negative results. Utilitarianism, on the other hand, holds that the common good or the best interest of the scientific community and society forms the true end of one's action. If we assume that it is in the best interest of the scientific community and society to be informed about research findings in an unbiased and transparent way, then utilitarianism would suggest that withholding results would violate the principle of the greatest good for the greatest number. According to deontology, an action may be called morally good or bad if the action is in compliance with relevant principles, norms or codes. In science, we may consider reliability, honesty, respect and accountability as principles according to which we can decide whether an action is good or bad. If we reconsider our example of not publishing negative results, the action or omission is morally bad, since it does not comply with the obligation of being honest. In virtue ethics, the agent, not the action or its consequences, takes the center stage. Instead of judging what people do, it focuses on who people are. The focus is on the qualities of a person. According to virtue ethics, a judgment about not publishing results depends on what a virtuous person would do. This requires knowledge of the specific situation. It matters, for instance, whether the negative results are already known from other studies and how certain the results are. For research integrity, both utilitarian and deontological ethics are important and may be regarded complementary since science can be seen as a communal practice that strives towards a common good, utilitarianism, which requires compliance with certain principles and codes inherent in the scientific endeavor, deontology. But for combining utilitarian and deontological elements in the right way, virtues are needed. A virtuous researcher is able to discern which actions contribute to the common good in a specific situation. Also, 
a virtuous researcher is able to find the right mean between strictly following a rule or simply ignoring it. Take again the example of publishing negative results. A virtuous researcher will be able to distinguish between a situation in which negative results really add to our knowledge and a situation in which this is not the case. By focusing on the practical application of principles from utilitarianism and deontology, virtue ethics contributes to and is essential for research integrity. In fact, only through virtuous researchers may we aspire to having one day research within virtuous institutions and systems.